This channel is proudly sponsored by the Ira Kaiju Kickstarter, a tabletop RPG where you play as a kaiju that defends its territory from other giant monsters. Please check out the links in the description and in the pinned comment. Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Ira Kaiju. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about damage, healing and status effects. When it comes to taking damage, you have two types of damage here, pain and health. If you take too much pain damage, your kaiju will end up passed out and bleeding. And if you take too much health damage to the point that all of your health boxes are filled, your kaiju dies. You have damage and kill thresholds. This depends on the attack. In the case of unarmed combat, it's usually always 6 in threshold, that is, every single die that rolls above a 6, not a 6, above a 6, counts as a point of pain damage. And when it comes to a kill threshold, if any die in your dice pool rolls above this threshold, it kills the target. So let's say that your attack has a damage threshold of 6, and you rolled a 7 and an 8, so those are two dice, they inflict 2 points of pain damage. But if your attack had a health threshold of 9, and one of those dice rolled a 10, then you kill the target. When it comes to running out of pain points, or if all of the pain boxes are filled, then you start to take health damage. You could consider pain as a representation of fatigue, or an extra layer of health, so to speak, that needs to be removed in order to target the health points directly. But it also depends on the attack. Some attacks actually target your health points directly. When it comes to healing, you can heal yourself and others through kaiju powers, or by resting in your preferred environment, or letting your wounds heal naturally. Of course, natural healing is slower. Your kaiju may end up affected by various status effects, such as bleeding. When a character has bleeding status, they take 1 health damage per turn until the bleeding is stopped through healing, powers, or other actions. If you are caught flat-footed, your defense is zero, and of course this is very bad for combat, as we will see in the next part of this review series. If you are restrained, you are unable to move or act, only by accumulating a number of successes by perhaps trying to break free using your might, will you be able to release yourself. This number of successes is determined by the power used against you, such as webbing. And these are just some of the status effects, there are many others, such as stealth, stunned, poisoned, raging, etc. They are there to serve as guidelines, you don't need to memorize all of them. After all, it depends on the situation, the context, the powers, etc. Anything that is being used against you or that you decide to employ against others. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about combat. As you can see, understanding healing and damage is quite simple. And when it comes to the status effects, like I said, they are guidelines. You can apply them as they have been written on the book or depending on the situation at hand. Thank you for watching this part of the review. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. This has been Abraham El Jaguar, a professional game master. If you want me to run a game for you, please check out the pinned comment below. And remember, master roleplay and you will master the game. Once again, thank you and see you later.